Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to another episode of Real Hi-Fi, where I take you on the road with me, this time to Biggles Wade, England, where I was in early July to visit PMC, Professional Monitor Company, which was established in 1991. PMC is known for making speakers for the studio and home, and one of the hallmarks of all of their designs is the use of transmission line loading for the bass. This is a technique I don't know that much about, so I was able to corner Toby Ridley, one of the key acoustic designers there, and he agreed to do this video segment and answer some of my questions. So Toby, throughout the PMC product line, I think forever, mm -hmm. transmission line technology has been one of the cornerstones of the company. Can sure. you explain what a transmission line is? Sure, well, you're absolutely right. So every product we've ever made has featured a transmission line as the base loading principle. The simplest way of describing a transmission line is it's a long tube, which is open at one end and has a drive unit somewhere so, in it. So where is this tube? It's, it's so snaking through the it's box. Snakes in the cabinet, yeah. So if you looked at the side of the speaker, there's uh, the transmission line goes sort of from the front up, down the back and out the front. Um, so you fold the transmission line differently in each speaker, depending on what the cabinet dimensions are, what you're trying to fit, uh, what cabinet, le what transmission line length you're trying to fit in it, and various other things. Um, so yeah, the, the most fundamental thing, it's a tuned uh, pipe, which is open at one end, which will resonate at a certain frequency. The frequency it resonates at is controlled by the length of the pipe. And so where you said it's open at one end is mm -hmm. right here. Yeah, so this is the opening, the exit of the transmission line. We call it the vent of the transmission line. Oh, there's a number of different terms we use interchangeably. Um, so this allows the air to come in and out of the cabinet. Um, the frequency that this line is going to resonate at is linked to one quarter of the wavelength of that corresponds to the same length of the actual tuned line inside the cabinet. So uh, we talk about them as quarter wave resonators. Uh, and that is the quarter wavelength frequency at which it's resonating at. Um, there's numbers of ways that we can control the tuning frequency beyond just the physical length. This is where it becomes complex. Um, the geometry of the line, the, the shape and the cross-sectional area of it, at each point down the line, has an impact on the tuning frequency. If you start wide and end the line really narrow, that will lower the tuning frequency at the fundamental frequency. If you add absorbing foams and things like that, that will change the tuning frequency. They'll tend to, it's a bit of a misnomer, but we say they slow the speed of sound inside the line, but they do effectively make it appear like a longer line, having absorbing materials inside it. And this tuning frequency is a low frequency. It's a low frequency. Examples yeah. would change by speaker, but what? It changes by size and length, but generally we're looking at, so for a floor standard like this, we'd be looking at 30, 35 hertz. A floor a bookshelf like this, maybe about 40, 45 hertz. And when you you uh, are driving the, the speaker around the, the transmission line's tuning frequency, what happens is that the column of air that's inside the line is being moved in and out by the, by the drive unit. When you hit the tuning frequency of the line, the air inside the line actually really stiffens up. Uh, it becomes quite rigid and it actually sort of couples to the back of the drive unit cone. And that stops the cone motion. And you can see it, if you do a frequency sweep, you can see the cone almost completely comes to a complete stop around the tuning frequency. And instead, all the energy comes out of the vent. So that means around those frequencies where the cone isn't moving much, but you're still getting lots of bass output from the transmission line, you get an enormous reduction in the distortion from the speaker because distortion in speakers primarily comes from driver excursion. The more you try to move a drive unit, the more it's going to distort. It's going to not move linearly at certain frequencies and things like that. So by reducing that driver excursion, we're massively reducing the distortion and headroom for a given uh, input or output level. So that's a benefit, that's lower a huge distortion. Benefit. Are there any other benefits to transmission line Lots. loading? Okay. Yeah, so the prim primary one is uh, low frequency roll off and extension. Uh, because the way that it's functioning is a quarter wave resonance, not like a Helmholtz resonance, like in a, in a ported box, um, it's a very low Q uh, resonance. What that means is that it doesn't have one very narrow peak in, the, in its efficiency. It has quite a broad peak in its efficiency around the tuning frequency. What that means is that below the tuning frequency, it's still actually being quite active, and above the tuning frequency, it's still quite active. So you're getting these benefits of uh, increased headroom, reduced distortion, and uh, increased output level over quite a broad frequency range. And deeper bass? And deeper bass, yeah. So because the transmission line is active, yeah. because of the broad uh, the broad frequency bandwidth of the resonance. Uh, 
even, or you, though you might have a tuning frequency of say 35 hertz, the transmission line is still outputting quite a significant amount of energy, way down at sort of 25 hertz, 30 hertz. So it's a very gradual roll off, so you get much more extended bottom end than you otherwise might. So all those things are benefits. What are the non-benefits, the cons of sure, going with that so, transmission line. Uh, there's, there's a big reason why everyone doesn't do transmission line speakers, and that's that it's really, really difficult to design them well, okay. uh, genuinely. Um, so with sealed and ported speakers, there's very well understood equations that you can use. You can put in the driver's parameters, and it will spit out this box dimensions, and this uh, port dimensions will give you this tuning frequency, this roll off, this behavior, and all these sort of things. With transmission lines, there's many, many, many other uh, other factors that influence the performance and the behavior. So as I was talking about, the tuning of uh, foams, absorbing foams inside the cabinet, the profile along its length, whether you've got any sudden changes in direction, every corner in the transmission line will change its tuning frequency, will change its higher frequency behavior, all these things. So there's so many factors that are affecting the performance of the transmission line. There's no easy uh, equation that you can just put the parameters in and spit out, oh, we'll know how it will behave. So there's a huge amount of research, time, understanding that we've had to put in to get to the point where we can confidently simulate and understand how a transmission line will behave, but it's not easy and there's still an awful lot of trial and error that goes along the way the development. So difficulty in implementation. Now what I've always wondered from a performance point mm -hmm. of view, you've got this long channel sure. in these speakers. Is there a delay in the bass coming out I mean, event. yeah, so the simple answer is technically yes, but also no. So the delay, as we know, is going to be the time it takes for it to travel through the transmission line. Now we've tuned that to a specific frequency, say it's 30 hertz in this cabinet. The propagation delay is tied to uh, whatever one quarter of the wavelength at 30 hertz is, and the speed of sound is, so we can say if it's tuned, I think 30 hertz, it'll be about eight millisecond delay. Okay. Now, there's a parameter in speakers we, can, we call group delay, which is the time it takes for a sound that's input to the speaker to output from the speaker. And that's different for every frequency. Um, a sealed speaker might have a group delay. Uh, the, always the group delay will start rising as you go down in frequency, but a sealed speaker might peak at sort of five, 10 milliseconds to group delay, low frequencies. Okay. Ported speakers tend to find that your group delay will peak at 20, 30, 40 milliseconds. It can be higher if this badly designed, very resonant system. Uh, with the transmission line, as I was saying, the group delay on this, if it's tuned at 30 hertz, might be about eight milliseconds. So, so within the you're within the bandwidth of what you'd expect for, it's, it's between a sealed or a ported speaker's sort of range of group delay, but much closer to what you get from a sealed speaker. And that's actually one of the reasons why we see the benefits of the sound quality being tight and punchy, sort of like a sealed cabinet, because it has that very low group delay, because it's absolutely tied to the, fun the functional length of the line, rather than a resonant system starting and stopping, it's just a transmission through the line. Um, uh, so you get that punchy sound similar to a, a sealed speaker, but you also do get the benefit of the extra output and the extra uh, headroom and things. That surprises me, because I always thought the group delay would be much more. Now, one more final question. One vent versus two vents. There's not two transmission lines. There's not two transmission lines. It's one line throughout the cabinet. So, um, as I was saying, there's one of the fundamental parameters that you can affect on a transmission line speaker is the cross-sectional area. So in this speaker, for instance, we're very dimension limited. We've had to shrink the, cab the line cross-sectional area down quite a lot to fit it inside the uh, cabinet. You lose some efficiency by doing that, but you gain uh, actually you gain a bit of extension for the line length, but you also gain size constraints. With this, we were able to expand the line area quite significantly, giving us a bit more efficiency from the line, but just a taller... It reflects length. the size of the... It does, it reflects the size of the actual line inside. In terms of why there's two vents, it's just it's nice to use the same moulded part for both, to be honest. It's, it uh, looks good too. It looks cool, yeah, it's nice, so yeah. Well, that was really informative. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you. I always tell people that one of the key benefits of being able to go to these companies like I do is that I can learn new things. I can get right in there with the designers who do the work and I always come out with more knowledge about hi-fi and this trip to PMC was no exception. Thank you Toby Ridley for taking part in the video and thank you for watching.